Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 where you join me out in the depths of space on the Holmium planet of Njord. And this is where Tristan has been doing some updating to his, um, his previous Holmium system because to be honest it was a bit old-fashioned. He had, you may or may not remember, he had a massive column of um, chemical plants and similar going all the way down here. Uh, not quite, maybe not quite all the way down here. But there's there's a huge column of stuff because he was still using the the uh, the basic chemical plants and I think he might have had, yes, I think he had these sort of normal tier one beacons next to them. But that just wasn't producing the holmium at the rate we needed it to be produced at. And so he's gone out here, he's been doing some expansion and some improvement. And so you can see over here, we've still got the old-fashioned style of, um, of, of pulverizers in over here and that is because there is only one type of pulverizer there's nothing more you can do with these now you could he could put in some um, the better beacons nearby so if you put it if you put in these sort of beacons instead um, then he could perhaps put a row of them down here and then he'd be able to run these machines maybe twice as quickly maybe um so at the moment it's pushing through a speed uh, bonus of 160%, and uh, that's already taking in the 50% effectiveness of the of these things into account. So these machines are these machines over here, despite having the productivity modules in them, are still running at plus 80% of their normal speed, so a bit quicker than normal. However, these ones over here, now these are actually he's put in uh, tier six speed modules into these as well. So these are bump buffing everything up to 525% of their normal speed. So if he did that over here, we could get these machines running at about four times the speed they're running at at the moment. I suspect it's going to be a lot faster anyway um, even with the even with the tier 3 modules in now potentially he might then also decide it'd be worth putting in the tier 6 uh, productivity modules as well and that would pull the speed down a bit as you can see over here these are only running at uh, 385 plus 385 percent which is almost five times their normal speed but either way it's going to be quicker than it is at the moment and it's going to and it's going to produce a, and then therefore he's going to not, not need quite so many of all these machines and as ever the, the the big advantage of using the massive massive quantity of speed boosts on these is it means you don't need as many machines and if you don't need as many machines, you don't need as many productivity modules in them. So actually, putting these in here saves you on the num total number of modules you use. Um, if he's then able to find a way to perhaps remove these two belts here and pull all of these... Um, centrifuges in a little bit closer then that would mean that these would be able to fall under these beacons as well and then you get that massive speed boost to, for the for the centrifuges without needing to spend a load more modules on it and it's probably going to be worth going through and putting in the uh, the high-end uh, speed uh, productivity modules in here because we don't seem to have enough holmium coming through in general now granted the system is stopped at the moment and if we trace the problem back we can see that it's, it's because there's none of the none of the anion exchange beads here if we go up here to where they're being made we can see it's because there's no cryonite coming in so that's not a particularly surprising problem however if you upgrade all of these machines to the uh, the, the, the advanced chemical plants as well then these will all run much much faster you'll be able to put more productivity modules in you won't need as much cryonite and so that problem will hopefully go away and things will generally be a bit better, but you know it's it's, it's a work in progress. You can only do, you can only do so many uh, machines at a time. So he started off with the uh, chemical plants down the middle here, and that's worked really well. He's now he's now so he's now going to be getting much much more out because of this massive boost in the productivity modules, and the system is probably if anything going to run quicker just because these machines are amazing. And if we look back at the production graph over the last ten hours, you can see that it was bimbling along here, sort of uh, up to about five hours ago, which was, I mean, two hundred and sixty. Yeah, that 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 was, it was okay. It, it, it quantity was being produced and then once when the system was actually running flat out I'm going to assume this is about 450 the 456 460 we're seeing across the top here um, and that is that is almost twice as fast as it was going before and this is weird there's a weird sort of up general upwards trend going on here and I'm not quite sure I understand why because in theory when you when you sit, set up a new system like this it should just kick in at full speed you might get a big spike initially while it works through some buffer but having it gradually picking up speed like this seems kind of strange but you know well um whatever we'll have we'll have to see what how this goes when we get some more cryonite flowing in here and the system is running nice and quickly with all of that this has, of course, required a lot of clearing out of the old machines. You can see, you, you can see a bit of the detritus left from them down here. But it has meant that Tristan's been able to put in an additional mine down here, so he's got a load more holmanite being produced, and that's being brought up. It's only been brought up two belts, but in theory, these two belts plus the two belts coming in from the mine that's over here. Um, and then I think there's more coming in by train as well. Are the, is this Holmanite or Holmanite core chunks? I think this is Holmanite. Yes, and then there's more coming in by train as well. So there's loads of that. And then there's all of the Holmanite core chunks being brought over by these trains and being fed over in, into the into the crushers over here. And again, as I say, these could really, really benefit from some better speed modules um, uh, powering them, or better better beacons and maybe 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 more advanced speed modules because this is a lot of machines. That's kind of crazy. Um, 
So yeah, it'd be good, good to get that sped up a bit. But as you can see, this is then producing a lot of Holmanite that can then flow up here. And I think, yes, that is, if we look along, along here, you can see he's prioritising what's coming in from the uh, from the from the core mines rather than uh, what's coming in from the normal mines. And so, yeah, when it's when it's running, this should be nice and efficient and we should get a decent flood of, um, of Holmium out of here. Um, and that's a good thing because looking at the graph over here, you can see that we are still quite short of the uh, of the Holmium. Uh, there, there's currently apparently none of it up in space. So uh, maybe this is part of the reason why we keep running out of Holmium cables. Although that said, I don't think it is because there is a decent amount of it over here at the moment. It's just we don't have the buffer up in space to keep everything running. And so yes, this is this is a good upgrade to the system we had before. Um, and it's amazing how much of a difference upgrading to the advanced uh, chemical plants makes. And especially when you go in and put in the speed modules as well, because I, I, I presume this is dealing with the uh, Holmanite at the same rate it was being dealt with before. But now it's that much instead of... I swear it came down to about here. I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but it was an enormous column of these chemical plants coming down here. So <laughs> this is the this is one of the things that's a little bit problematic about playing, certainly especially with Crestorio 2, um, because you keep getting these more advanced machines and more advanced technology, you end up wanting to rebuild things again and again and again. So you, it's, it's, it's a difficult decision over how big you want to build in the first place in order to get the resources coming through that you're going to need, in this case for, for energy science and for all the other things we're building that uses the, uses Holmium, and lots of blue circuits as well, for example. There's a lot of stuff that uses the, that uses the Holmium. But then you don't want to build out too big because... By the time you uh, by the time you need that much of whatever the resource is, you're going to then have, be wanting to go out there and rip it all up and replace it with a much more efficient system that's using better be that's using beacons and modules, and then at some point it's going to be using better beacons and better buildings, and better modules, and it's just generally it's a steady upgrade system as you as you go through the game. This is even more true with the uh, with the basic metal processing because you start you, yes sure you start off with stone furnaces move on to steel and those points you probably won't have built out too big but then you go oh thank goodness I've got electric furnaces I can build out a massive inf massive set of infrastructure now I don't need to worry about fueling them and so on and actually that said we 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 managed we built out quite quite on quite a big scale with the steel furnaces then all of that had to come up for the electric furnaces and then we and then I think we tried to put modules into them then it needed rebuilding again for the industrial furnaces and at some point we also put in the processing to to enrich the ores, and so that was another major changeover for, for the system. Then you, then we switch over to probably wanting to use the better chemical plants for enriching the ore, and then using advanced furnaces, and then probably at some point we want to use the casting machines as well when we've got enough vulcanite coming in to make the pyroflux. And so you've got this endless upgrade treadmill where you think you, you just don't, you, you almost don't want to build out too too big with any of the resort when any of the resource processing because fairly soon after you're then going to want to be able to m massively upgrade it and it's not just the metal processing as well of course because you have the you have the advanced chemical plants that allow you to build much much faster chemical processing facilities especially when you get the advanced chemical plants and then you and then you eventually get the advanced assembling machines as well and those are those are astonishingly fast and having faster machines means you can fit more throughput around a single beacon which means your modules go a lot further and having faster machines even if you can't necessarily put more modules in them means that you don't need as many modules in total because you, you've got fewer machines because simply because they run faster and so you've got all these decisions to make and I've gone completely off topic from having been supposed to be talking about the Holmium improvements out here but yes the Holmium has been very much improved as, as, as is always the way as you go through the process expanding and expanding the systems it's just a bit of a shame that we don't have advanced pulverizers and advanced um, uh, centrifuges now I know there are mods out there that can add those in but um, we're trying to be reasonably reasonably vanilla for the the mod set we've chosen and we don't like adding in the new uh, new mods mid run because it feels I'm not going to say it feels like cheating but it feels like you're changing the balance of the game after you've already started and that just doesn't sit quite right with me so we're not we're not going to do that the other thing that Tristan done is as he ripped up all these buildings around here they were absolutely full of tier 2 uh, modules speed and productivity now these ones have been upgraded to tier 3 but he had a lot of them from around here apparently um, and so he's been shipping all of those back to Norvis and that's great because when they get when they go back to Norvis firstly they'll go back in the spaceship and they'll be unloaded and they'll go into the junk warehouse over here and if we look in here we might we might see some modules nope they've all been taken away and from here they'll drop down into the disposal system here where they'll be unloaded from the downstream trains passed down the belts over here well they'll then be loaded into the uh, in, into the ground junk trains and from then over to here where they'll be emptied out into this purple chest the purple chest will get rid of them all very very quickly which means they'll all then end up being probably put probably put into the chest of shame at least temporarily so down here we've probably got a lot more modules than we had before there's some tier one productivity modules in this chest over here for some reason that's a bit last a little bit weird but eventually they'll all end up being taken back up to module city because we've got some, we've got the requesting chests on 
the uh, on, on the on the belts over here. So the tier one modules will end up here. The tier twos will here go in here. And as you can see, we've got, we've got a hundred of them in there because that's what we're asking for at a time. And then those will be gradually pumped out to be made into the tier three modules. So it pulls them all out of the uh, out of the back out of the system so they can be upgraded and turned into better modules. So they turn into the tier threes here and then get shipped up into space to be upgraded to fours, five, six, seven, or however high we we think we dare go. Of course, it's not just Tristan who's been out building new stuff. Mike has also been busy on Kothar. And as I've talked about in the previous episodes, that we've had endless problems with Kothar just being, with the Iridium production on Kothar just being a bit slow because it requires so much processing and so, and so many heavy, difficult steps. And the Iridium just doesn't stack up very well. Um, as you can see here, you only get 10 per stack, which means when you bring in a train full of Iridium, it empties very, very quickly and just disappears into the voracious moor of the factory. And so, Mike has expanded out to the north. Now that this planet is, has been made completely friendly, all the biters on it have been completely exterminated. Um, he's left, left me a little note here saying everything above here is new, great. So he's built out the railway system that comes up here, and he's put in a load of core mines um, in this area, because out in the centre of the planet, there's quite a lot of core, core frat seams available, so he can, he can go in and, and tap quite a lot of these relatively easily. They're all cl quite close together. Whereas down on the, on the edge of the planet, or what I've been calling the corner of the planet, much to everyone's amusement, um, they're, they're they're much rarer. So you can see it down here, there's one, two, three, four. Okay, there's, there's four in this sort of area over here. But up here, in a much, much smaller area, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. And so you can see why he's decided to come here into the middle. And the way he's, the way he's got this set up is he's got all of the all the all these core miners drilling or drilling it up, putting it into a single warehouse. There's some stone in there for some reason. I, I'd recommend dealing with that before it becomes a serious problem. And then they can be very, very quickly loaded into a train, and he's gonna have presumably he's gonna have endless trains shuttling up and down this route, um, because because I suspect with this many core mines and on a planet this big, he's probably going to have a very healthy stream of core fragments coming out there. Now, granted that this is an Iridium planet, and so maybe these run a bit slower, I, I don't know. He's getting one per second out of each of them, apparently. And he's got six at the moment, and a seventh one down here that's sort of being plumbed in, and then an eighth and a ninth one's up here that could easily... Uh, ten, ten, there's a few... Eleven, there's a few more that could be, could be added in quite quite easily. He has added these two in over here, but there's a few more that could be added in. So call it eleven, eleven a second... And they stack up to uh, 20. So two seconds to fill a stack. Four wagons means 160 stacks. So 320 seconds. So he's he's got a tra he's got a train load coming out every five minutes, and that's actually not that many. I was expecting it to be more than that, um, especially as a train load will probably empty quite quickly into the into the uh, into the moor of the factory down here and disappear through the through the pulverization system over here and be turned into the into the iridium now the um, elephant in the room that i've been sort of ignoring as i've been bouncing around is that this is the fact this is sort of this has all ground to a halt despite everything i've been saying and he doesn't have a big enough um stacker here so this is going to cause it's probably going to cause issues with the trains which maybe it's not i guess because the trains are going to either be coming to the ore drop-off station or the core mining drop-off station he can kind of use this area here as a stacker for the um for the core drops it's a little bit ugly but uh i guess that's mike for you uh, and of course, he's bringing in, still bringing in the crushed over here, which is which is much more effective, and that's working. That's actually working really nicely. Except that, as I say, we've, we seem to have run out of something. So we've run out of enriched vulcanite. Um, that worries me a little bit because I, that makes me wonder if that's possibly a, a my fault thing. So let's let's sort of trace that back a little bit. And if we look up here. Um, there is there is 15k in this. There's 305 stacks in this warehouse, and as dis previously discussed, a train is 160 stacks. So no, that is not my fault. That's that's a, that's probably a train jam due to the issues going on down here. Let's find out where the where the train's gone to that that should be should be collecting these. Okay, he hasn't put the train in. That's why it's not working. <laughs> okay, right. So at least we at least we found an easy fix for why the iridium has stopped flowing. <laughs> However, in the time that it has been running relatively recently, we, we see some spikes going up to about 750, which is pretty good. Um, if we look back over even, even longer term, you can see that it had the, the, there has been this general uptrend of the, the amount that's being produced from, from this sort of level. Um, maybe that's a nudge, I'm not quite sure, but then that's definitely an improvement up to there. A small improvement to here. And then, this has been going up and down so rapidly, it's kind of hard to tell what the average is. Uh, if we look over the last... Uh, if we look at, I was going to say, if we look over the last 10 hours... I don't know. It's kind of unfair because it's not been working for an hour, and then, but this. So ideally, I want to find the average from about four and a half hours to about one hour ago, and I'm going to eyeball that as being roughly somewhere in the middle. I, I I don't know. Anyway, so but once but once that once that train starts, once he puts in a train that will pick up the uh, the enriched vulcanite, things should get a lot better over here. I'm a little bit surprised we're not still shipping it in by delivery cannon, to be honest. Uh, maybe that's been turned. Off. I don't remember turning that off, but maybe it has been. The infrastructure is still definitely there on Agnea, but. 
Let's not let's not worry about that right now. Anyway, so yes, the um, there there has been there have been some various improvements made over here. I think there's been some more. There's been general upgrades on the amount of the uh, the resources coming in. We've got uh, to the point that when this was when this was working, we had pretty much a full blue belt coming in from here out of the high priority systems, and these are high priority because they've got the tier six modules in them, and then an almost full red belt coming out of the low priority ones down here, um, and that shows you the difference between uh, tier three and tier six modules, I guess, because if if all of these were running flat out, which I suspect they probably were because I think we had a lot of the um, crushed iridium available at the time. The fact that we're getting a full blue belt out of these and, and a not quite full blue belt out of this one suggests that we're getting almost twice as much out from just upgrading to the tier 6 modules through here. That feels optimistic but maybe possible. So here we've got a productivity boost of 32% and down here a productivity boost of 16%. So that means we're producing about 1.5 times the amount that you produce without any modules at all. Up here we've got a boost of 56% and, and then a boost of 28% and that's basically t a doubling of the amount that's coming out. So yeah, it's not quite it's, it's not quite the, the, uh, the twice as much that it felt like, but it is an extra third and I suppose that's enough to make, apparently that's enough to make up the difference. Or perhaps there was a not quite, it wasn't, or perhaps the input belts going into the machines down the bottom weren't quite full, I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, either way, we had we had a nice healthy supply of it coming through here. It looks much better than I've ever seen it before. And then it's going over here into into uh, furnaces which are all completely filled with, uh, with with the tier 6 modules. And so, yeah, we had, uh, on and off, we had quite a healthy supply of Iridium coming out. Um, and it looks like there's only some relatively minor fixes that are going to be needed over here. Um, I guess that once Mike switches over to having all of his Iridium ore brought in pre-crushed, like we're seeing over here, then this station over here can be removed and then can be turned into a Stacker to, for the for his core trains coming in over here. I have a feeling that he's going to need additional uh, pulverizers down here in order to deal with all the cores that are coming in when they're coming in a bit faster. But I could be completely wrong. We'll um, we'll let him work that one out once things start running again nicely. I believe there were some also some issues going on with bringing in some of the uh, resources over here. So as you can see over here, we currently don't appear to have any. Um, we don't have any rare metals available, and we don't have any uh, see iridium being dropped off. Uh, there is still currently plenty of plenty of mineral water though, and if we have a let's have a let's have a look up in in um, Kothorbit at the spaceship. What have we got here? Yeah, it looks like we have now actually completely run out of rare metals, and the spaceship is only 20% full. So there is, yeah, there is a definite, very, very serious shortage of rare metals on this planet. I think we're going to need to run the spaceship back and forth a couple of times to try and build up a little bit of a buffer and probably also, given the spaceship is here and there appear to be no um, rare metals at the moment, probably increase the amount of rare metals that are being brought in as well. Although if we look down here... This is this seems to be where the rare metals are being dropped off. There is eighteen thousand of them in this warehouse. I'm not sure exactly how many iridium that'll turn into, but it'll keep the system running for a little while. And they're flowing up here to make to make the nitric acid. Now there's a bit of side loading going on here, which means he's obviously trying to prioritise this belt, which comes from over here, which comes from right. So this uh, this will be from core core processing probably. No, this was another. This is this is kind of weird. Uh, whatever whatever's going on here, it will it will cut off this nitric acid production system over here. Maybe maybe this is this this one does look significantly more modern though. It's using advanced chemical plants, whereas this is using normal chemical plants. So my guess is that this is an upgrade of this system over here, and he's just trying to pull everything off the um off the belts through here and get and bring it over into here. Although this is taking out the rare metals that are, that are coming from the core processing, and so that'll allow him to then um, deal with some of that. Although the core processing has stopped, and I. I don't know why. Is this is this full? No, this is not full. The core processing has stopped because he's got too much mineral water. That's a weird problem to have. Uh, that's going to need to be sorted out because the, mineral water is a thing that we needed crazy amounts of on this planet. There was always a shortage of it. And now, apparently, there is so much of it that the core processing has jammed up. So that's another thing to fix. Still, I mean, big steps forward are being made, but it's definitely two steps forward, one step back. However, that is still one step forwards overall. So things things are things are getting better. And I have and I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw too much shade because the number of times I've gone in to try and improve something and then discovered I've created half a dozen extra problems at the same time, uh, I, I, I I couldn't count it even if I took my shoes off. So it, it, it's happened many. It, 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 it's 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 just the way Factorio is basically. <laughs> However, it has been made rather obvious by the complete sudden lack of iridium coming out 
out of this off this planet. But you know, it can be it can be fixed. We can see where the problems are, and those can be sorted out. All of these upgrades and all this going to tier six modules did in, did increase the power uh, demands rather a lot to the extent that Mike has now put out uh, has now significantly increased the amount of power being generated up here in uh, in, in Koth orbit. If we if we have a look at the uh, the, this over the last num, num, num hours, yeah, you can you can see it was coming along here, at generating as much as he possibly could from the from the uh, old solar, and then it's gone up quite drastically when additional was put in, I suspect. And he's now got well, he's now capacity is now 7.2 gigawatts, which is almost double what it, the, the the highest it's ever been before. So I think he's probably going to be all right there. Just needs um, <laughs> just just needs to start using the power again. <laughs> While I was twiddling my proverbial, sitting around in my spaceship, flying around the solar system, uh, trying to solve Mark's riddles and puzzles, I had looked into another riddle, as, or another puzzle as well, okay, and that was trying to work out what on earth has been going on with our batteries. And so over here, we have we have a system where flat batteries are brought in on the disposal belt, and they come into come in along here, and then they're passed into the, along these belts here, where we charge them back up again and send them back out. Fine, great. Sometimes when a train uses up a battery, it comes out as a broken battery rather than a discharged battery, and those. Can be brought along here they're fed in uh, along here through, through this system where they're then repaired in these recycling machines put back onto the belts and pass back in to be, be reused again essentially what happens is the battery the, the batteries in the battery pack are knackered so you get another five of them shove them into the destroyed power pack with some acid to, to, to top them up i guess um, and then pass them back out onto the belt and you can use them again and so so we've got those being fed in over here and so this should be a closed loop system we should have batteries get charged batteries going out along this belt and then discharge or broken Broken ones coming back in along here, being turned back, in, being turned into discharged batteries from the broken ones, then pouring back into the system and going through here to be recharged. But I noticed that there were rather a lot of batteries in this um, in this chest here. It got up to 2,400 at the beginning of the stream. And I was going, that's a bit weird. Where have all these batteries come from? How have we managed to build up that many extra flat batteries? When in theory we should only be letting new ones through when there's a massive short when we've got an absolute shortage of them. And then this carried on climbing, it got to 2,800. Now Tristan's put in an additional storage chest over here, and there's almost 2,000 in here. So it feels like these batteries are breeding, and maybe, could it be that when the, um, when the train batteries run out, there's this, it sometimes it sometimes takes out a discharged battery, and sometimes some, sometimes sometimes it takes out a failed battery and a discharged battery. Is there a bug in the mod? Is, and would that be enough to have produced this, this extra um, four thousand, five thousand uh, batteries? I, I don't know. I don't know where all these extra batteries are coming from, but it seems to be, there's there's something strange going on. So in an attempt to make sure it wasn't extra new batteries being somehow put into the system, I flipped around a belt in here, so we will now see if a gap forms in here. It'll be very very obvious that. A little bit of a gap you can see is because I didn't flip the uh, thing around smoothly enough, so that that, that was on me. Um, but there shouldn't be they shouldn't be being fed through here. I'm sure they aren't, but something very strange is going on here. Where we're getting more and more of these batteries, and that is despite me putting some extra load on the battery system by expanding out over this way and putting in all of this belt down here, which is pulled which is pulled a quantity of, um, of of charged batteries or, or out through the system to, to fill up all of these belts. I was going to say, and I put in an extra train, but I, I actually haven't. I, I, I found one that had been abandoned so that I've started using for the solids over here. So I've not put in any extra trains, but there are quite a lot of batteries on these belts here. So that should have taken... That, that's several hundred, I think. And it should have take, pulled all of those out of the system. So it's a bit of a mystery as to what's going on with the batteries over here. Um, if you have any ideas, then, you know, answers on a postcard, let me know in the comments, because this is really puzzling me. About the only thing I can think of is that we've act, is that we at some point pulled up an enormous number of them from somewhere, just in, in presumably in the process of building uh, building our railway systems. A load got pulled up, put into the chest of shame, and they've now ended up being brought over to here or something like that. that I mean, that could... That could increase it a bit, but it's run out now, and I haven't looked at the last week's videos, but I imagine it was probably... Uh, was it empty then? I, I, I'm, on, I'm honestly not sure. But something strange is going on here, and I don't, I don't understand it, and I don't like it, because if this carries on happening, then we're just going to fill up all of these chests, and it's going to back up all the way, and it's going to cause all kinds of problems. So, yeah, I would like to know where all these batteries are coming from. Thank you for listening to my rant. <laughs> 
down on Norvis. I turned off all the stations that are bringing in resources in order to make the uh, the red circuits that are being made into blue circuits because we have blue circuits being made elsewhere in a more efficient way. So I wanted this system to run out and that has been a resounding success. Possibly, uh, well, it's been a reasonable success. The only problem with this is that we now have an enormous amount of resource on all of these belts around here. So we have loads of, loads of silicon and plastic. We have absolutely huge amounts of glass down here. The glass is possible. I feel like the glass might be the worst. I don't know. We've got five and a half. Thousand. Yeah, the glass is the worst. We've got many, many thousand. We've got 40,000 in there. Another, yeah, we've got about 40,000 glass in the warehouses alone, not including what's on these belts. And that's a huge amount. I don't really want to send the bots in to go and gather all that up. Um, although I may well have to. I could send in another train of copper uh, because that's clearly the thing that runs out first, and then I'd have to. But then I'd have to send in another train of stone bricks and maybe another train of silica. Y you can see how it's going to be a difficult thing to get get down to a sensible balance. But at least on the plus side, we are now making the um, making the making the uh, blue circuits in a slightly more efficient way. Um, however, there is a slight problem. This train is never going to go anywhere, so I guess I should probably come in here and um, leave that on zero and tell you to go off to blue circuit um, pickup. Find another blue circuit pickup. Can you find another blue circuit pickup? Or if you go... Ah, the station down here has not been named as blue circuit pickup yet. So once that's been done, like that, then maybe that train... Maybe, maybe we can convince that train to come over here. No, it still, doesn't, it still doesn't really want to. If we send it to here first, just to get it out of the station, and then say go to blue circuit pickup, now hopefully it's not going to have the opportunity to be stupid about it all. Yeah, there we go. It's now heading off to where I wanted it to go. And so now we can potentially stop using this station and debate what we're going to do with these literally probably 100,000 bits of um, miscellaneous resource over here, whether we want to have a, a bot frenzy to deal with them all, or whether we want to feed in a bit more copper and a bit more stone and just sort of try and gradually pull it down to a sensible amount. Maybe not stone, actually. There's quite a lot in this where... Uh, Maybe there isn't. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Or fiddle, fiddle it through, push it through slowly. And last week I talked about how big oil was running on rather outdated modules. It was tier 2 everywhere over here. And I think I think all of these machines in the middle had... Yeah, they were set up like these ones with 1 speed and 2 productivity. Which, I mean, is better than nothing. But it's it's not great. And given the amount of oil... Given the oil is a finite resource. And we didn't have a huge amount over in the, um, in the storage systems over here. As you see, it's only 54,000. That's significantly less than a train's worth. So it seemed to be worth making this run a little bit more efficiently. And so I've gone through all of these all these machines. I've, I've put in now the, the brought them all the way up to tier three modules, which is our just chuck that in everything type tier at the moment. Um, I've also and I've also done these ones down here, and I've put some speed beacons around them as well with wide area beacons. And these are covering they're covering the first two rows and the last two rows. So there's three in the middle that are going to be running slowly. But I very very strongly suspect that having it's set up like this is going to be faster than it was before. It's certainly going to be more productive. It's going to be a higher product productivity bonus because of the, uh, the tier 3 modules in here. And I think these speed modules, even though it's only on some of the machines, is going to make it quite a bit faster. Looking at this one, this is running at 204, plus 240%. So it's running at 3.5 times its normal speed. These ones are running at uh, 0.4 times their normal speed. So let's ignore those and say we've got these running at 3.5 three times speed. and these, Whereas these ones over here are running at uh, double speed. Hmm, so we've given it a 50% increase, but we're only using about, we're using slightly more than half of the refineries. It, it's not, it's not, it's perhaps not an actual increase, but I think, I think I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. What I could do is put in some more, um, I was going to say I could put in some more beacons up the middle, but I actually can't. Um, because I get beacon overload on the on, on the uh, refineries down the bottom. What I could potentially do is go through and replace a row of, uh, some of the, some of the, uh, refineries along here with beacons maybe that one and so on all the way across and that would get then and then remove these ones and that would get all of that would get all of these refineries but then I'd have to do something down here as well and then maybe, maybe that would be putting then and then I perhaps I put the put them down the middle of here um yeah the, the improvements could be made but I suspect we're probably going to have enough I mean as you can see these machines have all stopped so we do have enough petroleum gas at the moment uh, these ones have all stopped we, we've got enough of everything except heavy oil and that's probably because we're making loads and loads of thermofluid at the moment as we discussed earlier <laughs> Because Mark has escaped, I have done some emergency repairs. So previously, there was a um, there was an iron mine in this area here, and how how was that? You say there's no iron there. Well, that's there's a very good reason for that. That's because it's been it used up all of the iron that was underneath it and had run out completely. And so the iron that was coming down here and being turned into iron plates, into steel, and then into barrels had stopped flowing. And that meant these this, these barrels had stopped flowing. And that meant that over all the way over down here, we were no longer putting the uh, the, the byproducts of 
of um, core pulverization into into the barrels. And so the core prop and the, so the core pulverization system here had jammed up, and so all the core chunks were being sent straight off to Norvis, which isn't great. We prefer not to send them over to Norvis as core chunks, partly because some of these things are useful on this planet. So this had jammed up because the pipes had all filled up with oil because it couldn't be put into barrels and got rid of uh, because there were no barrels. And so because there were no barrels, the core processing wasn't running, which meant there was no iron coming out of here. And so I wasn't able to just then come over and, and grab the iron to take it away over to be made into barrels as I have now done. So I, I, I got around that by just dropping this, uh, this this tank in here, which is probably which is no longer required really. We, we could get rid of that again. It doesn't, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's pretty much harmless. Um, but yes, now I've been able to tap off a supply of the iron that's coming through here, much like I did on Agnea, and that's now being and any. We've now got as much as we need being passed through this way. And then, as, as I said, that's being brought over here to be made into, into the barrels uh, as, 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 as we want. Tristan looks a little bit into a shortage of uh, Vitalic Reagent. He said there was just not enough stuff had arrived, so maybe we need to have a look at the numbers and, and ask for slightly more to be brought over um, at, a, at a time to keep to keep keep it up. Maybe maybe we've just done something over here that was particularly hungry on the uh, Vitalic Reagent. We're going to keep an eye on it and, and then decide anyway. Talos ran into an interesting problem. So the elevator over here actually ran out of cables and broke. And this was for m m multiple reasons. Firstly, the, the, the most obvious reason is because we weren't, I wasn't bringing enough cable out at a time. So I've now bumped it up to, I think, 3,000 cable instead of 500 or 1,000 or whatever it was on before, just to try and make sure that doesn't happen again. But the problem was slightly more um, complex than that, because if this ship if this ship had been flying backwards and forwards often enough, then it wouldn't have been a, it wouldn't have been a problem. But we're getting through beryllium so slowly that the Talos ship is just sitting here in Norbit, waiting, waiting and waiting to get unloaded. Uh, and so I came, and so in order to try and make it go a bit more often, I put in this additional warehouse here and that allowed it to empty a bit more we got some of the some of the junk out of it that's been loading up and that, that, that helped a bit and enabled me to create enough space in it to be, for it to be able to load up with a decent amount of, uh, of, of elevator cable and then I had to dispatch it manually and even with the even with the extra warehouse here you can see that we've still got 12,000, 5,000, 7, 8,000 beryllium in these warehouses waiting to be unloaded and it's just it's just not coming out very quickly. Um, we have we have more beryllium than we know what to do with. So in an attempt to sort of to use some of it up, we did a load of the uh, zone discovery data and explore, which is why we've got quite so many of the uh, the asteroid fields out here. Now we are going to want to find all of them eventually, so it's just do, meant doing it sooner rather than later. But it's a little bit of a concern that we can actually have too much of one of these resources to the point where the systems at the other end break down. Now. If it does break down completely like that, you could say it's not the end of the world. If the elevator breaks, it just means that next time the spaceship goes out, it has to bring enough cable with it to make sure it can rebuild the elevator, and then everything will start working again. The problem is that because Talos is a fairly old planet, one that we've had an outpost on for quite a long time, its meteor defense system is down on the ground, as is its umbrella defense system, which is down here somewhere. Uh, and that means if we if the cable if the cable on the space elevator breaks, then we lose power down here. And if we lose power, then we lose the meteor defense installation guns. And so that means we're then no longer protected, which means meteors can fall and destroy stuff. And obviously we don't want that to happen. So it's a bit of a problem. Uh, we're going to need to we're, we're going to need to keep an eye. I mean, obviously, I guess the fix for it would be to move all of these up into orbit and have a load of and have the meteor defenses up in orbit, so that then if they're so that they always will have power and it doesn't matter too much if the cable breaks. It just means that everything will grind to a halt for a little while. And as you can see, all of this is ground to a halt because we've got a lack of sulfur because the spaceship hasn't been out to bring more sulfur. So it. The problems sort of, I'm not going to say they compound and there's loads of them, because it doesn't really matter. We have so much beryllium stockpiled over here that the fact that none's being made at the moment is not a problem. We can just sit here, twiddle our thumbs, wait for the uh, wait for the train to go away. My only real concern is meteors falling from the sky and smashing stuff up on the planet because it's run out of power because the cable's broken. So, yeah, it could be, it could be a problem. It probably won't be. We'll have to wait and see. Finally, I would like to report that Tristan has taken my suggestions on board and has started being a bit more efficient with the, um, with the, or has continued to be more efficient with the uh, purple underground belts. As you can see now, there's a lot less belt around here than there was before, and, all, and anywhere where it does go underground, it doesn't come up again for quite a lot further than it did before. So, uh, yeah, well done there. I think that that's a very good thing because these purple underground belts are ludicrously expensive. As we saw last time, it takes about, I think, it, I think it takes 40 purple belts to make each one of those underground belts, and each purple belt takes several iridium bearings. So they are they are phenomenally expensive, especially given our shortages of um, iridium, as we've been talking about all, all episode. So, yeah, well done there. I, I definitely approve of that uh, improvement. Um, thank you. Thank you for doing that. And I think that brings us on to the science. 
We have done mining productivities 9 and 10. These are, as I think I've said before, these are the ones that mean each time a drill does an action, it gets slightly more stuff out. So this gives you, each one of these gives you a 10% boost to your uh, mining productivity. Now those are, those are additive, not multiplicative. So it's, so after you have, if you've done one, you get 110% out. If you've done two, you get 120% out, not 121% out. So that it doesn't multiply it by 1.1 uh, every time, but it adds, it just adds on an extra 0.1. But you know, still that's not to be sniffed at. If we've done 10 of these, that presumably means we're getting twice as much ore out for every, uh, every drill action. As you can see up here, we have a mine, yes, mining productivity of plus 100%. So that means all of our drills will produce twice as much stuff, so they'll effectively run twice as quickly, but the patches will last the same amount of time, or you'll, at least you'll be able to get twice as much ore out of the patches. And this applies to core mining drills as well. So every time a core mining drill runs, you'll get two, you'll get two items out of it instead of just one. And so that helps a little bit with the, um, with the massive slowdown you get when you start putting lots and lots of core mines onto an, an, any individual planet. We have done deep space zone discoveries. We have done many, many of those. We did 21 to 30. Uh, I know this says 36, implying we've, we have done 35, but no, we, did, we, only did, we ended up to 30. The rest have happened while I've been recording videos, so they don't count. But yeah, th those were largely to use up lots and lots of, uh, of the beryllium. As you can see, they use lots of the astronomic science packs because it uses three of them for every research and mm, quite decent chunk numbers of them for, for each, uh, each actual process as well. And so that really stress tests the astronomic science production. And uh, it, it does actually struggle a bit because it's capable of producing a nice healthy stream of any one of them, but when you ask for ones, twos, and threes, then it starts to struggle a bit because you need to you need to make ones go into the twos and the twos go into the threes. So if you try and pull all three of them at the same time, then it starts to struggle. But it does mean you get through quite a lot of the beryllium, and that um, might have helped a bit. I'm I'm not quite sure. We're using it for other things as well, I, I guess. So it's, it's not just that. We've done spaceship structural integrity six. Now that's quite expensive. I mean that uses lots and lots of the advanced tech cars. Three thousand two hundred for that, and some relatively mundane stuff as well. But that means if I look at one of these spaceships, you can see that we now actually have a little bit of extra space that we, we could make these spaceships now slightly bigger. So when Mark designed these we had limits of 800 on our spaceships um, and so as you can see he's pushed right up against the limits with, with, with both of those. He's, put, well, he's pretty close to them. Um, and now in theory if we wanted to we could make a slightly larger spaceship so that's nice. We have developed Power Armor Mark IV which presumably has an absolutely phenomenal inventory and loads of defences and toughnesses and resistances and so on. Yeah we've got an equipment grid of 12 by 12, inventory size bonus of 50. That's pretty good. I would be tempted by one of those but the thing is is, I mean, with, with us doing with this, with this being space exploration, we actually need to use the space suits, which we currently have available up to tier three, which also gets you an inventory size bonus of fifty. So it's just as good there, but the equipment grid is slightly smaller. Actually, I say slightly smaller. It's only t it's ten by ten, so it's it is slightly more than two thirds of the size of the other one. It might be quite useful. It might be worth making a power armor for any sort of combat shenanigans that are, that are required. So going in and cleaning out pyramids, that sort of thing, and then having a thruster suit for just general bimbling around and building stuff. Maybe I'll do that at some point. I wonder if we've got enough. Um, protective stuff for it to be realistic to go after that pyramid on Agnea yet because that was scary. Oh, looking at the thruster suit Mark III, we have apparently also um, re just researched that as well. So uh, conveniently, look, I'm looking in the right place. Uh, this this is actually brand new, so no, nobody will. I probably won't have had one of these yet. And I noticed that it's blue, so you know it's in my colour. So I clearly should make myself one. That does mean that Tristan will get a more advanced thr uh, thruster suit than me because I think this one's kind of purple or is it black? Uh, hard to say. And to go with that, we've got Adaptive Armor Mark V, which gives you 500 points of shielding and can regenerate 25 hit points per second, so that's quite good compared to what, what do we have before. Well, the 3 is 105, the 4 is 210, so it's a nice big jump up from those. Um, and these ones, then they don't give you as much protection as the uh, as the personal shields do, but they work with jetpacks, so they're much more useful in general. And we've researched Matter Fusion 1 and 2. These allow you to turn pink clouds into various different... Um, resources. So we, we could, for example, turn a load of these into iridite uh, if we're short of it, um, or any or any of the other things. And, and, and um, tier one gets you the mundane resources. I don't see this being particularly useful because making particle stream is sufficiently expensive that I can't see why you'd then decide, oh, I know, I'll just turn all of it into resources that can just be, you know, dug up out of the ground on another planet. However, these are gateway uh, researches to getting things like antimatter production, advanced matter liberation. Oh, so that's that's going the opposite way. That's turning um, uh, turning matter into particle stream. So you could, in theory, turn one type of matter into another type of matter. Problem is, you would also burn through a certain amount of um, matter liberation data at the same time, and that stuff is also expensive. So it doesn't really feel worth it, to be honest. Uh, 
I mean, people may you may disagree, but looking at that, I don't feel I don't think that's I don't think that's going to be actually actually be all that useful. However, from there you can then get onto all kinds of other exciting stuff. So I think it's it's worth doing. It's worth doing all these researches, but mostly to unlock the things that are behind them, like antimatter ammunition, for example. <laughs> Although I think we'll have killed all the biters with plague rockets before we need that. And finally, we are in the process. Yes, I know it looks green at the moment, but that's because uh, we, we, I've spent some time recording videos. We are in the process of making radar of researching radar construction pylons. Um, these. I suspect seem to do everything. They distribute electrical energy, they extend the construction area, and they provide radar vision uh, over a 64 by 6, uh, and yeah, so it seems like it does basically everything. Uh, maybe we'll start using these, maybe we won't, we'll see. I did start in the um, in the expansion over for the uh, for the deep space science, I started using the um, the construction pylons, which are presumably basically the same but without without the radar. So these these are quite good, they, they, dis um, they are providing all of the construction nurse around here I think it just doesn't yeah there we go it just doesn't get shown up properly when you highlight over it because the factorio engine gets confused because they're doing both power and robot port stuff and it doesn't really understand that properly as you can see we're getting quite good coverage from these of both the um the carrying the power and the uh, and, and carrying the sort of the construction area the problem with them is well there's, there's a couple of problems with them one of them is that unlike is they're like the big the normal big pylons they only have a relatively small area of electrical power coverage around them so you can't use them on your own that you can't use them on their own to replace the robot ports and the uh, pylon substations maybe the next tier ones that we're, we're just researching we'll, we'll be able to do that with and we'll be able to replace both of those with them but as they are they can't do that. And the other problem with them is that you, they, the, if you want to put one down at the absolute limit of its connection range, it's, it's then actually outside the limit of its, um, of its assembly range, I believe. So if I turn on Roboport range, yes, you see, see, see this give, has a Roboport construction area that goes out to here, but it has a cable construction area that comes all the way out to here. So you have to put them this close together, and that feels slightly wasteful that you're, you're not really taking full advantage of the, the ranges that these things can work over. That said, I suspect these are going to be linked. In fact, let's, let's, let's do an experiment. If I delete this one here, yeah, so there we go. You can, once you've built it all up, you can then start deleting the, every other one, and you will still have, I've still got full Roboport coverage for this whole area. Every, things will be built in all of this area, and it's linked the two of them together, Roboportedly. So, we will, so we will have full linkages like this. It's just a faff to make because you then, if you want to be tidy with it, you then need to come back and delete every other one afterwards. And that's, that's a bit of a nonsense. So we'll see if the new one is any better than that. And so that brings us to the end of the uh, the research. I um, And that means it's the end of the episode as well. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it as ever. And uh, if, if you do, you know, like, subscribe, follow, comment, all of those sort of things. And most importantly, come back tomorrow to join the satisfactory stream where I shall be carrying on with trying to do things with copper. Um, and then back on Thursday when we should be playing more K2SE and building up all of the things I've been talking about the, um, in the last couple of videos. So uh, I should be trying to, trying to actually make some uh, nano material over here for, for starters. As I said in the last video, I'm also going to start trying to make more of the uh, the Wednesday videos because um, I, I like having a, a little bit extra stuff coming out on the channel, and and those ones seem to be seem to be quite popular. Just little bonus videos here and there with uh, interesting things I've noticed or builds, builds, mods, whatever. And so I'll try I'll try and get some more of those out, and we'll see what else comes along on the Plat channel as well. I do want to finish off XCOM, but I think that might have to wait until after Satisfactory at this rate. <laughs> so thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.